Hi guys, it's uh, Moses from Mr. Benetti, the YouTube channel. Um, I am here today to discuss uh, taking uh, voltage readings off your electrostatic generator. Uh, I find uh, from the groups I'm in that there's a lot of uh, uh, misconceptions about spark length versus voltage and so on, and I wanted to clear a little bit of that up and show you a simple way to measure the voltage on your machine. Uh, I've had previous videos where I uh, built a uh, homemade voltage divider uh, out of uh, homemade Leyden jar type capacitors like this uh, connected to a commercial uh, 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor and it made a voltage divider. I hooked it up to an oscilloscope and I showed that you could measure your voltage peaks uh, and you could uh, use that to calculate uh, how much voltage is coming off your machine. You might not have a uh, oscilloscope. Uh, a lot of people who build these machines don't want to spend the money for a scope or uh, don't have a need for a scope uh, or afraid they're naturally afraid they might ruin their scope if they do have one. Uh, there's an easier way. Uh, also, uh, one of the things when you make a homemade capacitive voltage divider, as simple as I did it, uh, you have problems uh, you want to get your highest voltage reading, you want your electrodes open as far as they can go. And when you start sparking at that distance, uh, you, your wire becomes uh, a inductor. You get inductive spikes and you uh, tend to reset your, uh, your oscilloscope a lot and take difficult to get readings and you can actually destroy your oscilloscope if you're not careful. Uh, there are ways around that. I'll probably do a future video where I show how to do that and get rid of all those problems. but. Uh, Keep it simple today. I'm going to show you how to use an analog kilovolt meter and measure your voltage. Uh, an analog kilovolt meter, like you see in the picture here, in the video here, is uh, looks very similar to my little analog Chinese-made uh, uh, micro app meters that I showed in my uh, current reading videos. And the truth is, it actually is a micro amp meter. All kilovolt uh meters that are analog are actually micro amp meters uh this company yt meters which i found on aliexpress uh makes meters ranging from five kilovolts all the way up to 200 kilovolts 200 kilovolt is the one they have here as you can see all their meters even if, if it's a five kilovolt or if it's the 200 kilovolt uh have a maximum uh input current of a hundred uh, microamps. So this particular meter means if I'm sending 100 microamps through it, I better be reading 200,000 volts. And the meter itself can't assure that if I just connect the meter up and put it across my poles and get a reading of uh, 200 on it, it means that, um, that I have a machine that's generating exactly 100 microamps and it doesn't tell me a thing about voltage. The way you get these kilovolt meters to become kilovolt meters other than they have kilovolts written on them, is you need a high voltage resistor of the proper value to give you 100 milliamps at the maximum reading, because they're, like I said, they're 0 to 100 milliamp, microamp uh, meters. You need a uh, resistor that will give you that 100 microamps. If we remember our Ohm's law, Ohm's law says that uh, if we take our voltage and we divide it by our current, we'll get our, uh, we'll actually get the resistance that we need. Uh, in this case, if this were a zero to 100 uh, kilovolt meter, and I took my 100 kilovolts and I divided it by uh, my uh, 100 microamps, uh, which is 100 divided by a million, by the way, if I did that mathematics, I'd find that I need one billion ohms of resistance. And we call that one giga ohm of res resistance. Uh, this is a 200 kilovolt meter, so I need actually two giga ohms of resistance in order to get a hundred uh, microamps to flow at 200,000 volts. So, uh, turns out this YT meter charges $13.50, I believe, for the meter alone. Uh, with shipping, it's shipping is free. And I got it really fast. I got it less than two weeks from China, but I live in Jerusalem. Uh, maybe in the States it'll take a little bit longer, but, uh, Again, uh, they're pretty good uh, and they answer questions very well and their English is quite good for a uh, Chinese company. Uh, and you can buy all the meters they make with the uh, high voltage resistor included uh, that matches that meter. They'll send it to you for an extra few dollars. I think it costs $22.50 with free shipping. 
if you get the resistor included. Uh, that red thing over here, this red piece right over here is my uh, 2 gig ohm uh, 10 watt resistor it came with. It's a high voltage resistor. Of course, you can make a high voltage resistor out of a bunch of smaller normal resistors. The problem is you need uh, the uh, high voltage would short across the resistors without uh, corona rings and you'd, uh, you'd wind up with a resistor chain that was several feet long and it would be impractical. So you just go ahead and get the high voltage resistor designed for the purpose. Um, that's that. Also, just like when you're doing the current readings, it works much better if you have high voltage wire that can handle the voltages you're dealing with. Uh, turns out I'm dealing with a lot more voltage than I thought, but uh, turns out these 100 uh, kilovolt uh, high voltage wires I also bought on AliExpress fairly inexpensively uh, work just fine. If you uh, do order some, you can also get a 150,000 volt wire. That might not be a bad idea either. Uh, and as I mentioned, if you're using one of these uh, meters that's 100 microamps, you better have a machine that can produce uh, at least 100 microamps. It pretty much should uh, produce more than 100 uh, microamps just to drive the resistor. So if you have a hand crank machine, uh, you're not going to really be able to use this method because I haven't seen any hand crank machines that can generate 100 uh, microamps or better. Uh, this machine, as you saw in the previous video, video does uh, over 600 microamps at 2000 RPM. So it's more than enough. Uh, pretty much any, even a motorized one horse machine will generate well over 100 microamps when you're dealing with a 12 inch machine or bigger uh, and you'll have no problems. But uh, for very low current machines like Van de Groff's and hand crank machines, this is not the way to go. Uh, you have a couple options. You can do your voltage divider. You can make a capacitive voltage divider. You can make a resistive voltage divider. Or you can go out and you can buy a high voltage probe and, uh, and probe one side. Uh, the high voltage probes come in 40 and 80,000 volts typically. Uh, they're quite expensive. Uh, you can get Chinese knockoffs uh, at up to 80,000 volts for about $200. The name brands can go anywhere from $500 to $1,000. Uh, most people don't want to spend even $200. Uh, what you really need if you're going to use a high voltage probe is you need one that can go up to uh, over 100,000 volts. They have some Chinese made clones of the Tektronix probes that I've seen go up to 120,000 volts. Uh, they cost about $250. Again, quite a bit of expense that most people are not going to make. Uh, and to read a machine like this, you'd have to measure your voltage across one electrode. And it turns out this machine puts out so much, even 120,000 volts might not cut it. So we're going to see what this machine puts out using this analog meter. Again, it's a very similar setup I had before. I have my uh, Schedule 40 PVC tube as an insulating column because the meter can't sit on the table. It can't sit near anything that's metal that's uh, grounded or, or, or anything grounded pretty much. And it can't be in your hand because you're grounded uh, for two reasons. One, you'll affect the readings just like you're a grounded object, but uh, you'll get quite a shock. Uh, even though there's no capacitors on this machine, when you start adding resistances in and all that in the meter itself, you get a certain level of capacitance. You also get higher currents because of the resistance in there. Uh, you don't want to hold that in your hand. Uh, I'm talking from experience, you'll get quite a shock uh, and at the very least you'll uh, drop the meter and destroy it. So uh, meter mounted on some kind of insulator. I'm using PVC Schedule 40 tube that I happen to have laying around. It works just fine. Also you want your meter as far away from your uh, active area as your probes as possible because it will pick up corona from the probes and it will affect your reading that way. So the farther you can get it from that, the better. Uh, this is probably a little just too close, but it's working and so we're good. Uh, another thing, uh, we'll get the camera in here. You see at the bottom connection of this high voltage resistor, I have one of these Euro European style uh, uh, wire ties connecting my high voltage wire to the end of my um, resistor. Uh, don't get anywhere near that, even though there's no capacitance on the machine with that resistance. If you get near that, you'll get quite a shock. I did, started to do this video earlier and I have a sequence where I almost knocked me down. Uh, it's pretty funny. Maybe I'll cut it in, maybe not. But uh, 
stay away from that. Uh, ideally, you would have that insulated in paraffin wax or maybe some uh, hot melt glue would work just fine uh, and really, really get that encapsulated uh, and then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you can occasionally, I found when it's on the positive side, when you have the resistor on the positive side of your meter versus the negative, uh, it happens more, but every now and then you might get an arc going from one end of the resistor to the other. You don't want that. It's quite a big arc. It looks like you have capacitors attached to the machine, even though you don't. Uh, you don't want that, obviously. Uh, usually, uh, moving it over to the opposite side, the negative side, uh, I found eliminates that most of the time. If not, you do have to insulate that area down there uh, in order to get around the problem. You could throw the whole thing in uh, mineral oil, but that's kind of overkill and a mess. But it, you know, that can be done. You could uh, cover in a thick layer of paraffin wax or uh, cover in a thick layer of hot milk glue. All that would work fine if you have to. Uh, I've been getting pretty good readings without doing that, uh, and I seem to have gotten rid of that problem with the arcing, so uh, uh, right now we won't do it. Now down to the voltage readings, okay? I have uh, one end of the resistor hooked onto one of my terminals on my uh, machine. Uh, you're better off doing that, I found out, than holding the uh, wires in your hand and touching them while you're going. One, one wire, you don't want it completely hooked up, but uh, one side hooked up and the other side not when you're starting up the machine, I found, is the way to go. So we're going to turn on the machine. And keep in mind, uh, with your motorized machine, you want to have the machine going fast enough to generate at least that 100, that 100 uh, uh, microamps, otherwise it won't work properly. Uh, I have mine going pretty fast to generate well over 100 microamps. And you see it's already picking up voltage even though I don't have the other end connected. Uh, because the table is acting somewhat like a ground. I'm not getting the full voltage reading yet until I touch the other side. This machine puts out more than 200,000 volts, so you see I can't go across both of my probes, but we'll do it just, just to show you that. And you see I buried the needle well over 200,000 volts, so what do I, I, I'm not stuck here because my machine produces less than 400,000 volts. I can just measure off of one electrode and uh, ground the other side or hook the other side up to a neutralizer. So that's what we'll do here. And then you just double that voltage. I'm gonna turn off the machine for a second because we're getting on half the machine, we're getting uh, over 200,000, that's not right. Okay, we're zeroed out. We'll see if we can do this again and get a reliable reading here. Okay, the machine is running again. Uh, let's go see what we get now. And there we go. We're getting slightly over, uh, it looks like 160,000 volts uh, we're getting. Actually, 170,000. You got to let it level off because you will get initial readings more than, you know, uh, when you first took it up because of capacitance and so on, you'll get a little bit of a bigger reading. So my steady reading there seems to be about 170,000 volts, which means the machine is putting out 340,000 volts altogether. Uh, unlike current where I show you that uh, it doesn't double when you take your uh, reading, uh, you know, from, uh, from one side to ground and one side to a neutralizer, it doesn't quite double. Uh, but on voltage, it does. If you're getting 100,000 off of one side, you can guarantee that your machine is putting out 200,000 volts. In my case, I'm getting 170,000 off of each side, so that means I'm putting out 340,000 volts, which is 140,000 volts more than I suspected.
and then we are there we are again we're steady at 170,000 volts off of one side to the neutralizer which shows that it's 340 and that would explain why when I hook it across both poles of the machine it slams as far as it can go to the right uh, because uh, I'm over voltaging that, that meter. Uh, so surprisingly 12 inch machine putting out 340,000 volts. RA Ford uh, mentioned in, uh, let me turn off the machine. RA Ford is the probably the guy who got voltage on these machines closest than anyone I've ever heard talk about voltage on these machines. He mentions that you get about, off these machines, you get about every inch, you get about uh, 30,000 volts. And that's pretty close. That would mean on a 12 inch machine, you would get something like uh, 360,000 volts. Uh, we're getting 340,000 volts, which is fairly close to what he said. Uh, the misnomer is that people think, it, because they've heard from grade school or they heard from their physics classes, that uh, the uh, breakdown voltage in air, uh, normal air under normal atmospheric pressure is about 3,000 volts per millimeter. While that's true, uh, it, the uh, amount of breakdown of voltage that you'll get uh, for a given distance depends on your electrode size and shape. For instance, with two-point electrodes, uh, if you look up electrode uh, voltage charts online, you'll find out if you get two, you have 30,000 volts going across two points, you'll get about 53 millimeters. So uh, your 3,000 uh, volts per millimeter is way, 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 way more distance you would get than that because 30,000 volts alone just 53 millimeters. That's just about two inches. Uh, yeah, if that was correct, you would get uh, something like uh, 500,000 volts you would need to go that distance. And as you see, you do not, you only need 30,000 volts with two point electrodes. Uh, on these machines, you would typically on the uh, top, on the electrodes, you would see two small balls on top of larger balls typically, especially on commercial machines and people will know what they're doing. Uh, because uh, you want the small ball on the positive side of the machine facing towards the larger ball on the larger side of the machine, on the negative side of the machine in order to give you your big sparks. Uh, because you, you do this with these machines, your big spark length is, has, has no measure to the voltage the machine's putting out in terms of that 3,000 volts per millimeter uh, reading. Turns out you're producing closer to 30,000 an inch, which is uh, pretty much what uh, RA Ford says you get and uh, a lot of people when they read that they said oh he must have made a mistake no he's exactly right the way you orient your electrodes on the machines to draw big sparks you're typically getting uh, roughly 30,000 volts or slightly more per inch and as you see here I have a machine that's 30 uh, centimeter discs that's just under a foot let's say it's a foot so uh, I should get, according to RI Ford, about 360,000 volts, and you see I'm getting 340,000 volts, which is pretty damn close to his estimate. A uh, lot more than I expected. I really, really thought that this machine was only putting out uh, 200,000 volts. Uh, I recently destroyed uh, 100,000 volts of capacitors. Uh, I had uh, two uh, strings of 100,000 volt capacitors on each side, which worked just fine for a long time. I was drawing big sparks and they don't work anymore. Uh, I can only put about 20,000 volts, which means uh, a lot of the capacitors in the string just died on me. Uh, that was because I was putting out 340,000 volts and I thought I was, the machine was putting out 200. So just goes to show you, uh, these machines put out a lot more. The, the only reason these machines don't uh, increase their voltage to infinity because the way they work they keep exponentially uh, increasing the initial startup voltage uh, the only thing that stops it is leakage and stuff uh, so uh, uh, you could possibly get even more than 340,000 volts off this machine if you could eliminate leakage completely which is impossible but the more you can eliminate that leakage the higher your voltage and the higher the current that's going to come off the machine too but uh, it's a it's fair to say that with a 12 inch uh, sectorless machine like this you're gonna get uh, 340,000 volts like I'm getting uh, if you have sectors you the maximum voltage you can get is three-quarters of the voltage you get out of the sectorless machine 
So uh, assuming I was only putting out the 200,000 volts like I originally thought, if that was correct on a 12 inch sector machine, the maximum voltage I could put out is 150,000. Uh, and uh, I'm not gonna do the math right now in my head, but 340,000, and if you took 75% uh, uh, of that is the maximum voltage you could get out of a 12 inch sectored wind parse machine. 75% uh, of the 340,000 volts. Uh, and that's of course, depends on your sector size, your sector spacing and so on, but the theoretical maximum voltage is exactly three quarters of the voltage that you get off the sectorless machine of the same size. Uh, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.